Port Stephens. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Environment. Do you agree with the Deputy Premier, who said just now that your department hasn't done enough hazard reduction burning? Minister, we'll just, we'll just wait for silence, Minister. Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Look, I thank the member uh, for Port Stephens for a question and the Shadow Minister for the Environment. And I, I just want to say that we are still facing a very serious situation with these bushfires. We're not out of the woods yet. And there are still men and women on the front line, including National Parks and Wildlife staff, that are risking their lives to keep the rest of us safe. So today is not the day to be doing post-mortems and looking for learnings about what could be done better in the future. When that day comes, National Parks and Wildlife will be fully involved in the process. And we will take any opportunities to see what learnings we can take on board to see how we can do things better in the future. But I want to place the facts on the record again. The reality is that 80, in the last five years, 85 per cent of all fires that start on parks stay on parks. And that's a credit to the incredibly dedicated and hardworking professionals in the National Parks and Wildlife Service who put their, themselves in harm's way to not only protect our environment, but also to protect people and property. And that is a great thing and a great credit to the outstanding men and women in the National Parks and Wildlife Service. The reality is we have a five-year rolling target for hazard reduction. That target says that over five years, on average, we will do hazard reduction of 135,000 hectares. And last year, we exceeded that target. We not only met that target, we exceeded that target. We exceeded it and burnt 137,000 hectares of national parks. And this is, this is what happens. So I just want to pay credit to the amazing men and women in the National Parks and Wildlife Service. We're not only doing our hazard reduction burns, Mr Speaker. Leader of the Opposition, rise and a point of order. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The question is 129. The question was very specific. Yeah. It's about yeah. the Deputy Premier saying Thank his you. department is not doing Thank enough. You. And does the Minister yeah, agree so well, that his department is not doing enough? Thank no, you did not so say Thank that. You. The, the, you the, mini the Minister is being, the minister is being relevant and will yes, continue. Did, you Thank you. Thank you. Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I'm incredibly proud of the brave men and women in the National Parks and Wildlife Service who are out there fighting fires that didn't start on national parks and that aren't currently burning on national parks because they're putting themselves in harm's way to protect people and to protect property across this state. And that's something that we should all be very proud of. And as I said earlier, if there are learnings to be taken from this bushfire season, then we in the National Parks and Wildlife Service, we, at me as the Minister for the Environment, will be the first one sticking up my hand saying, what can we do better for the future to not only protect our environment, but to protect our community? And that's something I'm very proud of. I'm not going to have the National Parks and Wildlife Service being made scapegoats in this bushfire season, Mr Speaker. That's something that I will not allow to happen. We've got to make sure that we are all focused. We've got to make sure that we take the politics out of it. There'll be plenty of time. There'll be plenty of time to play politics, Mr. Speaker. There'll be plenty of time to look at what things could be done better after the danger period has passed. We're not at that stage yet, Mr. Speaker. There are men and women currently on the front line. There are families that still are living with the threat of bushfire on their doorstep, Mr. Speaker. So I'm not here to play politics today. What I am here to do is to defend the outstanding work of the National Parks and Wildlife staff, the 400 men and women on the front line at the moment, defending properties, defending people and defending our environment, Mr Speaker. And they don't just do this in bushfire season, Mr Speaker. They do it every single day of the week, Mr Speaker. Our National Parks Network is incredible. It is absolutely incredible, and it is one of the things that makes this state so great, Mr. Right, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and we're not, we're, we're not only going to protect what we've got, we're looking to expand what we have. 
we're looking to expand what we have because that's not only good for the environment, it's good for the community. People love our national parks and what we've got to do is make sure that we're not only providing uh, great national parks, we're also pro providing a great visitor experience, Mr Speaker, and that's why we're investing a lot of money. But, Mr Speaker, let me get some information on the table. As I said, national parks, in addition to having uh, 1,226 firefighters on the front line, which is up by 176 from when we came to government in 2011, we've also got five aircraft and 355 firefighting vehicles, Mr Speaker, to help fight the fires. And Mr Speaker, the government is committed to investing millions of dollars to upgrade our fire trails so that we can do things better in the future. That's exactly what I intend to do. Thank you. Before I